Hi everyone, it's almost Christmas and something very typical these days are the advent calendars. The advent of code.com is a programming challenge that occurs every December since 7 years ago. Many thousands of people participate by solving problems that appear every day and the difficulty of them increases day by day. So the first ones are easier and the last ones are pretty difficult. Something very interesting about it is that they can be solved with any programming language. So now I will make a little bit of demo about how to log in and participate. Okay, so let's take a look at the web. You can see here uh, adventofcode.com and this is the website. So yeah, it's pretty minimalistic, but you will get used to it. So first thing, when you came in, you have to log in. We can, we can log in with GitHub, Google, Twitter, Reddit. Uh, I choose GitHub. There is not other option, so you cannot put your username and password. Uh, this is more secure and easier for them to implement. So I did it with GitHub and I'm already logging because I did it before, but you will have to log in with your... Let's go to the competition and I will show you uh, how it was last year. So this year we cannot see yet anything, but we can go to previous years and you can see here that the last year I participated. Uh, let's see to the calendar and this is the final calendar from the previous year. And yeah, you can see here my personal track. You can go and check previous years like last year and others. And you can go now and, and solve those challenges, even the previous ones. So there is there is no limit to solve any challenge. You can solve it on a few hours later when it uh, appears or a few days later or months or years later. So there is no limit of time to solving them. OK, so let's see how it was the first day of previous year just for you to see. So last year it was about a submarine. Uh, so here you can you can read the whole story. Uh, and you can see that there was first this uh, first challenge up to here. Uh, this was my answer. Also, the answers are different for everyone because everyone has the same challenge, but a different input. So um, the code is the same for everyone, but as the input changes for every participant, the correct answer is different for everyone so it's not as easier as copying this uh, solution and pasting it to yours you'll have to get the code and at least implement it with your input then we had the second part of the challenge with the same input and the same problem but making it a little bit uh, harder and also again here uh, the second part input i input it here and i get the two stars from that day so now if i go to this link of here this was my input of the challenge. You can see that it's pretty long. So the idea, the challenge is, is easy, you will see now. But the idea is that uh, you cannot solve it manually. It's very difficult. Uh, there are many numbers here, so you cannot calculate it manually. OK, so let's see what was the challenge about. So you can read the whole story, but to make it short, it's Santa that went with his elves in a ship and they lost a, a key in the sea. So they have to go with a submarine deep in the sea. And the submarine uh, has a sonar and they can sweep the depth of the seafloor. Uh, this is an example of the list of, of measurements of this sonar. And your challenge here is to count how many times the depth increased. So if you have this list of numbers, they will always provide a simple example of what you have to do. So this is an example. If you have this list of numbers, you have to count how many times the value increased. So here, for example, from 199 to 200 is increased, so you have to count one. From 200 to 208 it's increased, so two. And you have to count how many times it increased, not decreased. So here, for example, if this was the case, the result will be seven, because we have seven increase of numbers. Uh, I made here a quick schema. So um, we are in the sea, uh, there is the sea floor, more or less, and we have this submarine that is advancing and is measuring the depth of the sea floor. The submarine maintains the same depth, so it doesn't go up or down for now. So this allows the elves to know more or less how they are advancing and uh, eventually they will find the key in the next day. So this story evolves with the next challenges. So the idea is yeah, to count if this was the, the case, this, if this example was the case. It's about counting how many times the next read of depth is, is larger than the previous one, if this number increases. So um, my, my input for this challenge, this is a, a short example, but the real input, you will find it in a link here around. Get your puzzle input. So here, if I click, uh, I get my input in this format, this text format. So once you have your input here, you will have to copy and paste it. You can do this with Control A 
and you have all numbers selected and then do control C to copy okay we have now copied our our input uh, in a text format now I open here my Visual Studio code so I solved this with Python uh, this is my main programming language and I was solving it last year with Python so I will do now um, the example of how to solve it with Python this year probably I will try to solve it also with JavaScript because I am practicing more about it so it's the perfect excuse to practice any problem language that you are learning okay so in Python we have three ways of running code the most typical one is to write a Python script and to run it then we can run code from the terminal if you have Python installed you can run it from here also there is a more recent way to run python which are jupyter notebooks uh, they are so used uh, by data scientists for example here we can run jupyter notebooks from google collab they are running free on the internet on your browser so it's quite simple the, the code runs in cells then we click here or control enter and the code runs the first one uh, takes a little bit longer as the kernel is initialized but then it's faster okay so i like to run these uh, challenges in jupyter notebooks but i prefer to run them on on my computer but this is also a, a good option uh, so i have my repository for that bin of code i recommend you also creating one uh, you can also push it on github i did it since day three so now i will create day one uh, for the example so i first start by creating uh, the file the text file where i have my input so i create day one input.txt and i will paste here these these numbers this list of numbers like uh, directly uh, you can see they, they are 2000 uh, lines long so then we save this uh, file and we can close it these numbers are in text mode so now we'll have to create our Jupyter notebook okay new file in the other folder uh, day onepy notebook okay uh, let's start by opening this file uh, in python we can do this with this command with open then we have to put the path to the file that it's in the data input folder uh, so the data input folder uh, relative to this file uh, has this path data input and then the day one file input txt we can optionally add here that we only want to read it but it's not necessary uh, we will call this uh, file as f and then we will we will call this uh, text variable input row for now because we have to transform it uh, input row equals to f read file read uh, okay so let's see what we have here and yeah we have basically the the raw string of of this file uh, here so now we want to transform this string this long string in in a list of of numbers so first of all we'll split it by this new line character so input row equals to let's call it input list equals to input row split split uh, with a new line character this will transform this into a list uh, let's then see it okay now we have our list but you can see that numbers are between codes so those are strings not integers and we want them in into the integer format into numbers so the next step let's delete this for now um, so the next step will be to transform every one of those numbers into integers so in python we can do this with a normal for loop uh, but uh, there is a more simple and clean version that are list comprehensions and let's call it input because this will be the the last uh, transformation and we'll be doing it uh, as this input equal to a list then inside the list we'll do this for loop for uh, n let's call it 
well for s because they are strings uh, yet for string in this uh, input list and for every uh, string in this list we want it to be an integer so this will take our for loop and create every element inside this list so th these are two steps in in a single one uh, so creating a for loop and a list at the same time let's run this and see what's the what's the result okay so now we have our list with integers so they, they are not strings now they are already integers okay so the next step uh, now that we have our input as we want it is to to start with the actual challenge so let's comment here part one because the challenge has two parts so the first part was about counting the number of times that our list has a larger number than the previous one so we'll create a for loop for this for uh, let's say n of number for number in our input list and we want to count if the current number is larger than the previous one. So we will create a previous that will be none for now. And if we have a previous, because now it's none, the first iteration uh, we don't want to compare because there is not uh, any previous number. So if previous is not none, so we have a previous number, then if, if, previous is smaller than n now we will have to add here a counter so let's create a counter counter increase so let's count how many times uh, our current value is increased let's start it with zero uh, so we want to increase our counter if the previous one is smaller than the current one uh, we can do this adding one to our counter this is the short version of uh, putting here counter equals to counter plus one. Okay, so that should be it for now. Let's print the result then. So let's put result one. Counter increase. We also, no, we are missing here uh, that we have to update the previous. So previous has to be our current number, yeah. So now, now it's complete. Now every loop, the previous number will be our current one. Okay, let's run it. And it runs and the result is uh, 1529. So let's see what was my result. Yeah, exactly. My result of the first challenge was 1529. Okay, so now let's see the part two of the challenge. So now we have the same input and the same problem, but they say that those measurements of the depth, they had some noise, uh, so they weren't as useful. And they asked now to do like an average of them and we'll do it with the sum of every three of them. So we'll take like a, a sliding window of, of every three of those and we will comparing that the sum of every three of them is larger than the sum of the previous three. So let's see if we can see this better. So we have the same problem, but now uh, we we don't compare every single read, but every three uh, of those, summing them and comparing it with the next three of them. So in this case, probably if we sum these three and then these three of here, the next ones are larger than the previous ones, so we, we will have to add one in this case. Okay, so let's try to implement this in code. I will make some space here. I will add another cell and this will be the part two. Okay, so now we will need a for loop, but this time I won't take this, this kind of for loop, taking every element of the list, but I will take the index for i in and to do this i have to take the range of the length of the input so i will be zero one two three and up to the length of the input but uh, i want to have it minus two because uh, the last two numbers won't have the uh, next three numbers to add them to so i have to do it like this so now our uh, current let's call it current uh, value is it will be it has to be the sum of, of every three numbers. So we have our input and it starts with the first one, then add it to the next one. 
i plus one and then to the second to the third one i plus two so this will take the first the second and the third and then i will be iterating like this so we have to compare it with the previous one uh, similar as before so we have to compare if we have a previous number so if it's not known then we we want to compare if uh, our previous is uh, smaller than our current sum of numbers and if that's the case uh, we need another counter counter let's let's call it um two to differentiate it from previous uh, problem variables okay zero and so if the previous one is smaller than the current one we want to add one to the counter okay then we want to set the previous sum as the current one and finally we will print this result result 2 is a counter increment 2 okay let's run this and it runs and it says that the result is 1567 and if i go to my result uh, it was the same so that's the way i did it more or less so that's it so we should copy this result and paste it here if that wasn't solved and it will tell us if it's correct or not okay now i will push this code to my repository lastly uh, let me show you about uh, how was last year a leaderboard the general one so uh, here you can see the, the general leaderboard of who won uh, all the challenge, but also here you can see the statistics of how many people participated. And here you can see that the first day participated 230,000 people. So the gold ones are the people who solve both challenges, the first and second of every day. And the silver ones are those who only solve the first challenge of that day. So you can see that 230,000 people started and then every day by day, as the challenges were more difficult, uh, less people could solve them. So yeah, you can see the last day almost 17,000 people ended, so quite a lot of people participate to this challenge. It's like a tradition for many programmers and people that like to solve these challenges. Also, if you are a quite good developer and you think that this challenge was so easy, I tell you that from day to day they are getting more difficult. And if we go, I don't know, to day, not the last ones, but uh, something in the middle, you will see that it starts to be like more complicated. So. I can tell you that this is also interesting for pro developers because from day to day they will find like more difficult challenges. So I encourage everyone to participate. Don't doubt in making any questions if you have and see you in the advent of code challenge. Bye bye.